Welcome to another episode of the Rondell Lane Podcast. I think this is episode number 10 now. I'm here with Hang Fawn of Hang Time Lounge. Mm -hmm. So tell us about Hang Time Lounge. What exactly is that? So Hang Time Beauty Lounge is um, and will be a beauty salon, a beauty bar, beauty salon bar. Um, We mainly focus on healthy techniques and healthy um, styles of beauty. Like the main thing you're doing right now is is nails. nails yes okay so how long have you been doing that nails i've been doing this for three years now three years yeah and you mind telling the people how old you are i'm only 21 guys 21 <laughs> 21 that's amazing to me because most 21 year olds i know um they don't necessarily have a business mind yeah I would say. yeah or if they do it's not professional like yeah, yeah, like for scamming. Sure. And like that. <laughs> what do you think led to you having such a mature approach to life at such a young age? I've always been pretty logical for a female. I've always been really logical. I've always been really tactical, and it's just like I've always um, kind of try to envision what I want from life because I never liked where I was at or where I like. Um, how it was growing up and it's just like I always wanted to break generational curses Mm -hmm. and I feel like it's important because um, I do what I do for my future family and what I want to build for myself right Mm -hmm. so in that sense it's like I seen the pattern when it came to a lot of things like I even went to middle college and I seen the pattern of people getting stuck in like loans or getting stuck in jobs and stuff like that for you to actually be successful you have to have a business. You have to have multiple sources of income. Absolutely. So I wanted to, you know, make my way towards that. Yeah. I definitely got stuck with the loans and yeah. like 10 years working for a the company American that lifestyle. I didn't yeah. want to do. Yeah. Like most of, from like my mid 20s to like mid 30s, mm-hmm. I was stuck in a job before I went full time with photography and all of this stuff that I'm doing now. Yeah. What's your ethnicity? Um, I am Vietnamese and I am African American as well. Okay. I am mixed. So um, it's really interesting because it's like I'm truly mixed. Most people think it's like one parent black, one parent Vietnamese. But both of my grandpas on both sides are fully black, and both of my grandmas are fully Vietnamese. So, okay. Um, yeah. So we, we know each other through a mutual friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he actually told me that you were complete, like, Asian. Oh. I was like, ah, she looked like she got a little bit of – Yeah. Uh, like, you know, a little bit of us in there. Yeah. And he was like, nah, she just – so, yeah, no, okay. like, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, are you from Greensboro? Or? I am, born and raised. So I've been here all my life. I haven't cool. moved anywhere cool, outside cool, of Greensboro. Cool. Outside of, like, being a nail tech, what's some other dreams that you have or potential career goals? So I'm a real – I'm a big dreamer. Um, I have a lot of goals. I have a lot of things that I want to accomplish. And with me being so ambitious – I can say that it's not as organized or as detailed and planned. Even though mm-hmm. I'm so logical, I'm not as detailed and planned. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I want to do. I just want to. I just want to inspire so many people. I want to like open so many businesses, and I want to set my family up, my kids up for so much success. Mm-hmm. Um, but for sure, I want to open some salon suites to inspire more entrepreneurs to get to where they need to be. Um, I want to open a school, a beauty school, to actually teach, to actually teach, really, right. not, not even teach certain materials, but to actually teach. Because these schools just take your money and go, you know, yeah. and leave you to the state board exams or whatever it is. Um, definitely want to get into real estate, residential and commercial. Like so, um, as a real estate agent or as a real estate investor? Or do you know that? A little bit of both. Okay. I definitely want to have my own um, real estate um, company. Yeah. Because I actually do work with a real estate investor. Well, mm. I know quite a, f- quite a few of them now. And they make way more money than real estate agents. Yeah, and, I don't think I want to. You don't like, need any. I'll, I'll do the agency as far as, like, with my company. And, mm. you know, people yeah. can do that. But gotcha. As far as me personally and with my money, I'll be investing. Yeah. yeah. In my is. time, I'll be investing. Are you, yeah. are you familiar with um, real estate wholesaling? Yes. I, I wholesaled my first property last summer. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I was oh like, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah, was congratulations. Um, it just kind of fell into my lap. My aunt had a property she was trying yeah, to get Yeah, are you of. still doing it? Are you yeah. still diving into it yet? Yeah, it's just... Um, it's a skill. Why not? Yeah. It's... Uh, 
That's the most money I made at one time. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. How does that link? Yeah. But it's um. You had to go through the cold calling and. Well, no. No. That. How was it? My process? aunt. My aunt had a house that. She just magically. Was given. She right place, back. right time, and oh. And she's um she's never rented it out. It was just sitting in an Abermall, like right outside of Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, she pays taxes on it every year, and she had a citation to go do yard work. So mm. she was um. Cutting the grass this summer, my mom, my mom rode up there with her because it's like an hour and a half away from where they live. My mm-hmm. aunt rode with her, and she was telling my mom, like, I'm tired of this house. Right. It's just, it's a headache. Right. My mom tells me, and I'm like, tell her not to sell it. Like, let me let me handle it. Right. And um, I contacted my client, and he kind of helped me find a buyer and wholesaled it. I got her paid. Got, got paid. paid. Yep. And win win. That yeah. was it. So, I do plan to do more. It's just that getting to like the cold calling, because like that that just fell into that's my the lap. part. That's really the part. And right I'm there. super shy, so it's I'm trying to find a person to to handle that side of the business. Nah, you got to do it. But yeah. you got to do it. Yeah. That's <laughs> what he's saying. He's like, man, just practice. suck it up. Yeah. But yeah, so I do plan to do more though, because that's. That's the passive money right there. Yeah. Like, you don't really I would love to, to con- connect with your friend. What was your experience before running running a business? Did you work anywhere or Yeah, um I've I've been working at a really young age. I've been working since I was um I believe 14. So I was working my first job was at Baskin Robbins in the mall. Okay. Um and I was working there for like over a year or something like that and then I eventually um work all my jobs ever been in the mall and i worked a lot of places in the mall once i had three jobs in the mall at one time um yeah so it's just like i always was hustling i always had had to make a way do you you like not like club or party or you're not that no um like i said i've always been really logical and i've always been really realistic with life so it's just like when i came to see people patterns it just wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what it, like, so when it came to school, I was never there to, like, impress and stuff like that. Like, a lot of things, like, I seen that kids were, like, basically like spoon fed and they'll mm-hmm. brag off what their parents did for them. Mm-hmm. And I'm in school, I'm over here getting it myself. So it's just like when they bragged about those things, it was just like really a turn off. Like, it was just really, like, really, like, this is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Because then I can see where your life is headed in 20 years. I can see yeah. where your life is headed in 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just, like, for me, it's just, like, I've always thought about the future. Like, I never thought about, like, what's happening now because, like, now don't matter. But it technically do because, mm-hmm. like, it's still your foundation. Right. So it's just, like, I always try to keep myself really grounded and really focused in a way. So I definitely sacrificed all the partying, all the hanging out. I never really had a lot of friends. Um, growing up or anything like that. I have more friends now than I ever did really? in my, my entire life combined, yeah. Do you find yourself being, like right now currently, um, are you are most of your friends entrepreneurs as well, or are they just? Oh, like, that's a good one. Um, actually, no. Really? Not a lot of them. I have a few entrepreneur friends, and I should have more. I found myself. Um, I should. Within, I said within like five years of starting my business, mm-hmm. I started to notice that my social group kind of started to change. As it should, yes. Because it was As like it a, should. Just, Y'all can't relate. Yeah, conversations and the, the is conversation, way different. Yes. And you want to talk about numbers, you want to talk about money. Ain't no point of talking about partying and drinking right now. Yeah. Like I never like that. So back in high school, that really helped me out too because it was just like I don't I don't have anything to relate with you guys. Y'all talking about how your parents got y'all this. And I'm talking about how I worked for this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? How I'm budgeting my money and how I'm, like, you know, paying for these things. And it's just like, yeah, y'all can never relate. And it's just like y'all talking about um, spending money on clubs, spending money on this and trying to get into that. Like, it's mm-hmm. just like I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to, yeah, <laughs> yeah how, how to, to start a business or something. Yeah. What made you jump into entrepreneurship rather than just, like, getting a better job? Again, multiple streams of income. Gotcha. You can't just you can't just hey it's working working hard I mean working smarter not harder like mm-hmm. you don't want to tire yourself out like how are these people retiring at thirty like you got to really look at how other people play their life out like yeah. they they're not doing it off of um, working like a couple jobs yeah. like and then just because then what jobs taxes you know right, what I'm saying and right. then business write offs right. like you right, know right, so right, it's right. just like it's about getting paid and not getting 
not being a payee, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Do you have any employees with your business, or is it just you right now? Um, I did have an employee, um, and that's because um, I got comfortable with what I was doing. I thought um, I'm really... I'm a really busy person. I like to stay productive. And it's like I got comfortable. And when it came to social media and posting, I hate social media so bad. Like I said, I never related to my peers. So it's just like I well, I was off social media a lot too. So when it came to social media, that's like my weak point. So I hired someone to do that for me. And it's just like I can't keep doing that. I got to do the work myself. Like yeah. like the code calling, you got to yeah. do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. Okay. So, yeah. So how how do you handle that now? Um, do you feel like you put enough content out to market your business, or do you think that's something you probably could? Currently, I'm struggling still. Um, like that consistency part, I'm struggling with. Um, but again, like I have to remember my purpose and why I want to do the things I do. Um, it does give me a big headache thinking about how I want to market my brand and things like that. Just marketing period, mm-hmm. it gives me a headache. But um, I do try to use the app Planoli where they'll um, keep your post for you and then they can just schedule your post how you want to. Okay. So that helps, like like what I wanna do is like spend um, a day off the whole week and just make my content for the week. That's smart. And then let it um, post itself. So usually it's on Sundays cause I'm off Sundays, but even though when I'm off, I'm never technically out. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I definitely understand that. Yeah. Um, what's your What's your preferred social media platform to put content on? Instagram. You don't think Instagram. Instagram's dead? Um, I like Instagram. I like Instagram clients because usually Facebook is not the best clients for you. Facebook is um, for the beauty industry. I mean, like, they... They're looking for deals. They're looking for. Um, I find that on for me. I find that to be the the opposite Instagram crowd. Yeah. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Oh, that wants deals. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Because for me, that that it's bro- video. Yeah. Yeah, my um, my younger dem- demographic comes from Instagram. Mm-hmm. So. In that perspective. They typically don't have the. Makes sense. The the, the income. It makes sense. So they want. Yeah. yeah, I find my um, because when it comes to Facebook, I find people who want deals and people who compare prices. That's and true. for Instagram, for me, like I find my people who actually um love my work and my brand and what I do things for, which is quality work and um things like that. Yeah, yeah. quality how, work and services. How do you feel about um when you get? Do you ever get tagged? And on Facebook, when they're like, somebody's like, "Yo, I need a nail tech." Yeah, or, yeah, for sure. Or nail tech for a reasonable cost. Like, no, no, no. I don't get tagged for that. Um, cause I get tagged they, in those joints. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't really get tagged for a reasonable cost. I get tagged for like you know emergency nail tech or like I need a gotcha. nail tech in Greensboro or like I need a um a travel nail tech or things like that. They were like, I need I need someone who actually know how to do nails or yeah. something like that. Like or like a certain style or something. That's that's the type of stuff I get um, gotcha. tagged in. But it's based off of. Your clients, like, what do you do with your clients, and how do your clients spread that word to other clients? Yeah. And that's where the recommendations go. Like, so it's just like how you um, portray yourself professionally and what message you send off, and then the clients will pass that on. Because my clients, they don't even play about me. They're like, shoot. You, like, as soon as, um, like, because my clients will see, get it all the time. They're like, oh my God, your nails look really nice. Mm. And as soon as they, um, they hear, like, the next question they hear is like, how much did they cost? Because at first they'll ask who did them, mm-hmm. and then about how much did they cost. My my clients will tell me all the time, red flag. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were like, nah, if you worried about the price, don't yeah. even come to my nail tech. Like yeah. I don't even want you around. Like you know what I'm saying? I'll share you on Instagram, but yeah, you yeah. you good where you at? Like <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hate that. That's kind of yeah, like that my clients whole, don't even play. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why my the people that tag me in those posts, I don't know why because yeah, like, you know I'm not gonna do this job. Like the, mm. the whole reasonable or cheap photographer, I'm like, yeah, I understand you're trying to support me, but like, don't tag me in those because that, that's code for they don't want to pay nothing. Like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hate that. Where do you get your entrepreneurial inspiration from? Is did any of your parents or family, or was that just something that you just said? 
working's not for me. I want Honestly, to I J Cole did. I um no role models. Honestly, like um and it got it did really well for me, but it kind of got dangerous um in a sense because I was um moving off the strength of me mm-hmm. and um I started going into like the laws of the universe and stuff like that trying to like gain power and control of my life off of that mm-hmm. and um in that sense I didn't really have a guide cuz I separated myself from like my higher and lower so and because of that I didn't have a guide and it's just like it's only so much that I know you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying I can't think that I know everything so when I made myself god it was like really dangerous yeah so every time I needed an answer for something I Pray to myself. I was just like, yo, hang, like, what do I got to do? And then, it, again, it made me, like, I'm such a logical thinker. I never gave myself time to be emotional about nothing. Like, if I had an L, I never looked at it as an L. I looked at it as, what am I going to do next? Yeah. How am I, I going to recover? Right. So it's just like, it really made, really made it dangerous because at the end of the day, like, for you to actually be a dangerous person, it don't matter how many weapons you have. I don't care if you know how to, like, shoot all the guns that you can. You have grenade launchers. You can have. You can read all the books in the world. You're not dangerous until you have emotional intelligence. Until you know how to gain control of your emotions and your feelings. That's what I thought. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you can get mad and shoot a gun. Now, now you're a dumbass. Right. You're not even a dangerous person. You're just a dumbass. Right. You can read all the books in the world and, you know what I'm saying, about conversation and how to socialize. And when, when it comes down to when you get offended, you shut down. That go out the window. All right. Emotional intelligence is super, super, super important. So, yeah. <laughs> dope, dope, dope. I like that. You feel philosophical right there. Yeah, for sure. So when it when it came to me um, making my, myself my own God and making myself my own power, um, in a sense, it did well for me. But in a sense, it um, put me in a loophole because I limited myself and my mm-hmm. thoughts. Um, so now... Um, just recently, like a couple months now, I started walking with God, and Him being my leader, being my um, my guide, mm-hmm. my life has been amazing. Yeah. When I say amazing, I'm telling you. So definitely believe in something. Definitely believe in a higher power other mm-hmm. than yourself. Yes, because like, because I went into the mindset like we're all gods and goddesses. In some sense, that's true. You know what I'm saying? We're made from them, so we have a percentage of them. We're small G. But there is a big G. Yeah, there, there's definitely a big yeah. G. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's just like believe in a big G so you can be inspired and be guided um, because you're not. I never like to be the smartest person in the room. Um, right. I humbled myself in those ways, like as far as socially, but I never humbled myself spiritually. And mm-hmm. that was that was dangerous. Yeah. That was super dangerous. So did you go straight from high school to being a nail tech or did you do any college? Um. So, in high school, it was um, towards the end of my senior year, my mom finally put me into nail school. So, by the time I graduated, um, I had probably like a few months uh, that I graduated um, high school. So, okay, I went to nail school in like August. I graduated around um, maybe like October or so. Okay. And then a few months later... COVID-19 hit. So we're out of school. So basically, even though you're supposed to graduate that summer, mm-hmm. I basically graduated a couple minutes, I mean, a couple months after that because of COVID. Okay, so I wasn't even physically in school and stuff like that. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's what happened. When I graduated, um, graduated nail school, I went into a nail shop and I started um, booth renting. Um, booth renting turned into working um, from my mom's living room because of COVID mm-hmm. and nail salons were shut down and stuff like that. And with that, it's like, you would think it's like a pivot. Um, I made it into something great because then my mom was just like, I'm not feeling comfortable with you doing this here because of COVID and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You bring in clients. And um, I started traveling. I started doing travel nail tech, and that's whoo, that was some money. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that was some money. Twenty twenty was that year, yo. Like that, it was that as far year. as making money. If you if you made it, if you yeah, like if it, you don't it let was, the world yeah. It was scary at first, but uh, once people got adjusted to everything, everybody every entrepreneur I know was making bank, yo. Like, In COVID, right? It was, yeah. The people who were actually 
driven and actually um because you don't even have to be creative for that type nah. of stuff you just gotta you just gotta want it that yeah. enough do you do the designs and all of that stuff like yeah for sure really? i do a lot of designs um with color acrylic with paint what do you, what do you think about the um like every once in a while i'll see ads or like something on like uh what's a shade room mm. or it'd be like like some like a somebody with nails and you might see like a fish tank in it or something. Just, yeah, yeah, something crazy. Yeah, what do you think? Of, is that is that ghetto or do you find? At the end of the day, cool? it's art. Like nails is art. Nails is beauty is art. Like with hair, like yeah. anything, it's art. So express it how you want to express it and get creative and fun with it. Why stay boring? You know what I'm saying? Like why be standard and um be limited by society? Like yeah. be different. Cause then at the end of the day, how do trends happen? How do new trends happen? Like, you got to be different. Just because one dope stick don't mean, like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't dope. Like, yeah. you still thought it was dope, even though it was, like, weird. Like, you don't want to see a lot of people walking around with it. But it's still it was still a dope concept that yeah. you did it, like, That's true. you know? That's true. That's yeah. true. What does hang get into, like, when you're not thinking about <laughs> making a bag or just a regular <laughs> relaxation? What do you what do you find yourself into? Um, I'm pretty boring. Um I like I love productivity, so I'm not I'm not a partier type. I'm not a I don't do anything else. I like to um, just praise God. <laughs> okay, I like to praise God. I like to cook. I like to um, okay do yoga, okay. stuff like that. Like something productive or something like social. I will try to be social and get myself out the house. Are you, like are you still in the gym? I saw you in the gym. I think over, over the summer. Yeah. Um, not really. I work out from home okay. now. I don't physically go to the gym as much anymore because it's, it's time. It's yeah. really time consuming for me. I'm canceling my gym membership today. Really? Actually, yeah. So I can just start working out from home and stuff like that. Because, I mean, I'm not that consistent for me to keep going to the gym, right? That so makes it's sense. just like, yeah, it just, it only makes sense for me. So you work. You praise God and you don't do anything else. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you watch? You watch. I don't it? watch TV. <laughs> I don't like TV. Just the only time no I series watch on Netflix or anything. The only time I watch TV is for social activity. Like when you know people around me are watching mm -hmm. TV and that's what they enjoy doing. I do. I sit down and do it with them. But really, like if it's something fun that I want to do, I like experiences. I like to travel. That's that's one of the biggest things I always. If you ask me what I want to do in life. It's travel. Like, I want to travel, so I love to travel. And I like things that keep my mind going if I am, like, doing something just freely. Mm -hmm. um, I love puzzles. I like doing puzzles and stuff like that. I'm pretty boring. So, so does my seven-year-old. Yeah. She I hate puzzles. I wouldn't say I hate reading. I like reading, but it makes me really sleepy, so I don't do that consistently. I really don't. Have Have you traveled to, um, like, any parts of Asia? Like, yeah, I went to Vietnam a couple times really? for sure. Yeah, growing up. So it's kind of like a second home because people would be like, what's the difference? And I'm just like, <laughs> like I can't tell you. Like, I, I really don't know. Like It's it's like it's kind of like I grew up there, too. So, really? Yeah. Okay. I've been there so many times, and I've been there since I was younger. So Can you speak the language? Yeah, for sure. I'm really fluent. Um, I don't um, I don't read as much, and I don't write, mainly because both, both of my parents didn't um, pass, I believe, like middle school. So they don't know how to read or write either. Gotcha. But I'm really fluent um, in speaking. And really my dialect and um, how fluent I am speaking-wise is so good that even when I go to Vietnam, they don't believe that I am an American. They think that I was born there because... That's dope. The, yeah. Say, was, say something in Vietnamese for us. <laughs> what, what is that? Happy New Year. Really? Uh, New Year's is coming up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. In February, okay. yeah. Okay. I didn't celebrate New Year's. New Year, I, I was about to say... New Year's. Mm -hmm. New, year. new Year. I didn't, new I, didn't, year. I, didn't, I didn't celebrate right? New Year. Because um, it's not really the New Year. Because, like, different countries, that say, this is not the New Year. Right. It's, it's actually in the spring. Mm. That's that's biblical, since you were talking about mm. God earlier. It's actually scriptures in the Bible that say that it's it's the spring. That makes sense. Like, that makes sense. this is the dead of winter, and they say this is the, the New Year. Yeah. I, don't, I, I actually don't even believe in... Um, time like that i believe in seasons right yeah i believe in cycles time is a so i don't construct. really yeah time time just really to help us track past. stuff but yeah it's, it's seasonal yeah. um so there's no such thing as not having enough time for nothing <laughs> well as an entrepreneur i, I, just, I don't uh, think there's a such thing everybody has 24 hours because I, I i need a clone right now 
That's why I'm kind of going through the same thing with, as you said about um, social media and posting. Yeah. And yeah. It's super hard. It's just, I mean, I guess, because like, I would like to sit here and say it's hard too. It kind of is. But like saying it's hard, it makes you limit yourself too. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I want to say that instead of saying it's what, what's hard, like what am I doing wrong? Yeah. What do I need to do better? And um, I feel like in most cases, it's time management. That's yeah. what it really I, I, is. I, I, and I, I, having, like, a routine and a schedule. So that's why I'm just like, okay, maybe Sundays I can make that work somehow. Are and you are you focusing on, like, reels or – for your post, is it just posts on your feed or, like, specifically, like, r- like reels, stories? Are you focused on a particular thing? Um – not particularly, just all around. Like, I want to make more reels. I want to make more TikToks. So make the TikToks to post as reels. Right. Um, right? Like, right. easy. Yep. Um, I can make, like, regular posts. Like, I just need to get into posting, period. Reels or, like, reels and TikTok. If if you got limited time if you, and Instagram is your platform, mm-hmm. you need to focus strictly yeah, for sure. on reels. For sure. Like, I... That's some of the stuff that I create for my clients. Like yeah. Reels, TikTok videos, YouTube videos, and reels will blow you up. Mm-hmm. Like, you can post all day. For sure. It ain't gonna, like, just like And it could be, like, the posts. simplest reel, too, and that yeah. will go viral. Like a time like, lapse. Sure. Yeah, You can do a time sure. lapse of doing somebody's nails. Yeah. Do a voiceover, and that, it'll. That's all you need to do, yeah. Yeah. So, Content is really simple, and we don't is. have to make it as complicated. I think we overthink it. And we do. And do, like, something grand. Right. Yes. And mm. and I think that's like perfectionist mindset as well. Yeah. Especially when we're entrepreneurs, we want things to be perfect because it's our brain, it's our our creation, and right. we, we want it to be right, right before we release it. But sometimes releasing something, period, is just the best thing to do. For the nineteen year old that's watching right now, and they say, "I want to be a nail tech or uh-huh. I want to be a makeup artist, whatever it is." I love this. But I'm too young. No. What would you? What would be your advice to that person? First of all. You can get licensed at like fourteen. Really? I think you can get licensed at like thirteen, twelve, something like that. Don't quote me, okay? But it, and it's per state. But like you can get licensed super young. But with anybody, I don't care if you're like twelve. I don't care if you're like thirty five. If you want to get into the beauty industry, I'll say find an artist that you like their work. Um, and you see that they're really consistent. Do your do your due diligence and research because these people are catfishes out here on social media. Yeah, they'll take the right angle and they'll look really good. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I'll, my clients will bring me nail texts to soak off all the time, and it's just like I can't believe they did this work. Like you know, like it'll look crazy. So do your due diligence, research that person, study that person, see if they offer classes. And take their class. Before you even go into a school to get licensed, spend that few hundred and get a cl- like take a class instead of spending those few thousands. Because then you'll just be in debt for a couple thousand and then come out of school still not knowing nothing. Because school will teach you like diseases, disorders, and sanitation. They don't really teach you how to design or like where, how to like really make your money, mm-hmm. how to like build your clientele and stuff like that. So when you find that mentor through through a class, mm-hmm. you can already start making money. You can already start getting into it because then you can go to school and realize like I don't even like this. True. I don't even like dealing with these clients. I don't even like servicing for this long. I don't even like doing this. I kind of want to do this. So give yourself room to experiment before you get into debt. Really. Because when you come out of school, you still gotta buy your supplies. True. You still gotta you still gotta make the money back before you even really seek profit. So why not, you know, spend that few hundred? Because most classes will come with a kit. Right. Make yeah. your money back. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, raise money and then yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, keep it low because, especially if you're charging, keep that on the deal. Mm-hmm. When you come out of school, like I said, they don't teach you what you need to know to make that money. They don't teach you the shaping. They don't teach you the acrylic um, laying and stuff like that to make your money. So when you come out of school, you're just still lost. And you still have it. Like, you have all Like, you have to practice so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I was just blessed when I came out of school. Like, I was just naturally good at it, mm-hmm. you know. And, um, but not naturally good as where I was, like, perfect. Like, I still improve. Like, I, one thing about me, I like, I like to 
I like to compete with myself. That's mm-hmm. the only person I compete with. Like I, I always try to do better than what I did a second ago, an hour ago. Mm-hmm. So that's what helped me be where I'm at today. But definitely just take a class. Do that. Or shoot, don't even take a class. Get you a little kit. Do YouTube. Yeah. YouTube is free. YouTube is the way. Like, YouTube is free. Yeah. Like, just do it on your own before going to school and trying to get licensed, before you go to the big dog. Right. Yeah, for sure. Have you ever thought about teaching on YouTube? Um, On YouTube? Yes. Um, Right now, I am teaching classes, like one-on-ones in group classes. Okay. Um, and my student will tell you that I'm – Yo, <laughs> I would get in. Like, I would get in. Like, I'm going to make sure you pick up this material because I don't want you leaving out here lost. Like, most people, like, again, do your due diligence um, when it comes to whoever you want to be your mentor because some people just will teach you or they don't even teach you. They show you, kind of like a math teacher. They'll mm-hmm. show you how to solve the problem on the whiteboard and then be like, here's your homework right, to right. do, right? They don't even really teach you the steps. So that's, that's what most people do too because it's quick money at the end of the day. But me, like, I will really break it down and make sure you have this. I want to see you do a couple on your own before we even move on to something else. Like, I want to see you lay that acrylic smooth before we go into something else. That shape, I need it to be as crisp or almost as crisp as me before you leave. Like, I want you to be just as good because by the next week, I mm-hmm. want you to be able to make some money. Okay. Some people, like, will teach you and they're like, I mean, if you practice enough, you'll make some money by, like, in three minutes. No, I want you to make money by the next week. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to be confident in doing it. What advice would you give to any entrepreneurs or <laughs> someone just starting out in business? So consistency with your routine. Don't compare yourself to others because that's really detrimental. When you go it on social, some, social media, you see someone be more successful than where you're at. You're going to start comparing. Don't do that. The only person you need to compete with is yourself. So those are important. And I feel like journaling really did a lot. This is like a new one that most people probably won't bring up. But journaling... Mm-hmm super 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 important um i i'm not a big fan of like english or like writing and reading because it is my second language but um when it came to me journaling writing out my thoughts and where i'm at it really helps um to reflect on that so you see your own patterns and you see what you're doing and so like you would think it's cool to just sit in your own thoughts and analyze about yourself but writing it down and seeing it it's mm-hmm. a completely different ball game. So I've heard I, that before. Yeah, so I definitely mm-hmm. encourage people to do journal, like for sure, for sure. I, I need to. I I've said I wanted to do that, but just no, try it. Like just really pick up the pen and whatever like thoughts come up, just write it down. Like you don't need no writing pop. Like oh, today I'm done. Like literally, like you're just gonna come up with your own thing and then come up with your own pattern. I suggest like writing down the date and the time. Because then you'll know, like, where you're at in this place. Right. And you'll be shocked. Like, you'll be really shocked. Because as soon as, like, the more you keep progressing. And, again, emotional intelligence, right? Mm-hmm. So the more you progress and stuff like that, you'll see um, where you're at. You'll see your patterns. And you'll see what you need to change. And where you'll, like, fall short at and stuff like that. So okay. it's so important. So how, how does your schedule, your work schedule go right now? Do you work seven days a week, five days a week? Um, I work um, Monday through Saturdays. And Sundays I'm off for the okay. Lord. Um, I do I do um, I do church, and then um, like I said, I I set time out for the posting. Yeah. So it's just okay. like I technically work all day every day, but it's like I don't. Oh, it's so important to give yourself rest as well. Give yourself some rest, man. For sure, because that that's one thing I struggle with, and that's the one thing that I have to. That was one of one of my New Year resolutions, yeah. right? Is to give myself more rest and to actually balance it out. Because normally I work like for months at a time, and I'm just like I'll rest when I'm on vacation, right? Yeah. yeah. Find an equal balance during the time because you're gonna burn yourself out. Like when I rest, I'll like I have to push myself to that rest. Um. I'll get burnt out to where it's just like, I don't feel inspired. I don't even like doing nails no more. And then I'll take a rest. And then I'm like, oh, I miss doing nails. That's not a good pattern. It's right. like super, super toxic. Right. Find find your balance within your week. Like in one week, find your rest. How yeah. often, like how many hours of sleep do you get a night on average? Um, Around eight, okay. I would say. Like I'll sleep around like 12 and wake yeah. up around like eight or nine. Um. Yeah, I really want to get into where I wake up at like five in the morning, five six o'clock yeah. in the morning. But yeah. I woke up at like four a.m. this morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Accidental. how did that work for you? Pretty good. What I do got you do in the morning? Um, I mean, typically I I wake up 
around the time you just said like eight yeah um but my new year resolution also which i don't i don't do really resolutions but my my goal for the exactly year of 2023 right that was like res- yeah right yeah it was just uh was like to be be more productive control my time more um wake up earlier get the gym out of the way and just all of that stuff and key to productivity is intention yeah being intentional with everything that you do like for sure and god it's like I know millionaires that don't wake up at like five, six o'clock in the morning, four o'clock, none of that. They'll wake up literally at twelve in the afternoon. Really? How is that possible? That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? Like find your own rhythm. Don't compare. Yeah. That's the big don't compare. So I'm over here like wanting to do this five, six AM. I'm waking up at eight, nine and I'm still like, you know what I'm saying, the best I can be. Yeah. I'm doing great. You know what I'm saying? I'll journal, I'll do what I need to do, I'll get myself prepared for the day. Find your own routine. Them cold showers not work for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I that, that uh, some things don't work for everyone, yeah. but like exercise don't mean do a full cardio workout. Like exercise just means being active in some way. Walk around the house, do something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do something um to get you moving. Cause that, that's how you stay healthy, but yeah, find your own way of yeah. doing how you want to do it, and don't go cold turkey on yourself thinking that oh tomorrow I'm gonna wake up at five. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. do it how you need to, or like um for this week I wake up thirty minutes early, or this next week I wake up thirty. You don't even have to do that. Just do what you find right, because at the end of the day, everyone's sleep schedule is different. Right. Everyone's hours that they need is different. Some people, I've seen people function like. Every day, they only function out four hours of sleep, and they actually more productive than I am, like, more active than I am. Yeah. It's like, dang. I get about five or six. Yeah, hours. it's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. And people be like, you need seven, eight. Not I eight. can't really sleep eight hours. I'll wake up. That's too long for me. Yeah. Like, some people, it would make you, like, really tired. Like, after, mm-hmm. like, let's say you, you do sleep past six hours, you just, you're probably, like, extremely tired and yeah, extremely like lazy. Throughout. Yeah, yeah. So you you'll find your own rhythm. Don't compare. Don't yeah. compare. Don't compare. Don't compare. Take advice, but don't compare. Yeah. So, as in closing, um, tell the people how they can find you. Oh, okay. So again, I'm Hang Fan from Hang Time Beauty Lounge. You can find me at Instagram at Hang Time Beauty. Um, you can find me on Facebook Hang Time Lounge. You can also just um. Google me at Hangtime Lounge or go to HangtimeLounge.com. Yeah. I, I like that name. It's catchy. What, Hangtime. Who, did you think of that? Or somebody? Yes, it's Hangtime. So it's my time, your time, quality time. So I focus yeah, yeah. on quality time. I focus on quality work. Um, my, like, during my services, it's really personal. And it's, like, really, like, I vent, you vent. And we just, you know, it's really personal. It's really um it's really comfortable. So it's like it's about my time, it's about your time, and it's about the quality time of it, the quality service of it. So, um, do you, yeah, the do, whole, you do like um, wine or anything like that? Wine? Um, I will start, I might start providing that just because I'm 21 now. I might, might not. You okay. know. I'm working on a snack cart. Gotcha. You know? Okay. okay. Yeah, I really want my own building so bad. So. Yeah. Baby, baby steps, baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. I, I went through a lot of different studios before I got this show. Yeah, it's about yeah. um progression, not perfection. Right. For right. sure. Right. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, for this was a great me. interview. Um, thank you. To you guys, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode. Yes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube things. Hit that. Go check out Hang <laughs> Fan on Instagram. Facebook, wherever you may be. And I'll catch you in the next one. Let Peace. him know if you want me back. Yeah, definitely. Pick at my brain. Let me know. Let me know. Ask me some questions. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it down in the uh, comment section if you got any questions for Hang, and we'll definitely have her back. Yeah. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. That's fun. See? I told you it wasn't bad, man. <laughs>